Uh, hi everyone, Big Thinny Burp Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it is time for a review of the new Blue and Exile album, Miles. This is the latest collection of songs from two West Coast underground legends, rapper Blue, producer Exile. About 13 years ago, these two offered one of the best hip-hop albums to come out of California in the 2000s, Below the Heavens, a witty, thoughtful, and uplifting set of tracks that put these two on the map. Sadly, though, the music industry utterly failed to elevate their respective talents in the coming years. Especially Blue, whose big major label debut, No York, was completely botched in terms of rollout. But as soon as he was released from his obligations to Warner Brothers Records, his creativity began to flow again, as did Exiles. They eventually linked up once more with Blue writing to a ton of beats that Exile had passed him, which would eventually become their 2011 record, Give Me My Flowers While I Can Still Smell Them, which was a good release, but not nearly as focused or as high impact as Below the Heavens was. More of a surreal, vibey, and abstract experience. So that was it, 2011. That was the last time these two dropped a record together. Now, of course, Blue and Exile have respectively been involved in respectable projects since then. Blue's record with Oh No, a long red hot Los Angeles summer night, I think is one of his best in general. But for many fans of Blue and Exile's music, nothing has hit quite like their stuff together. Which leads us to Miles, where these two are really making up for lost time with 20 tracks and 95 minutes of material. There are actually multiple tracks on this thing that reach five minutes, six minutes. The song Roots of Blue breezes past nine minutes, without an issue, and it's just Blue rapping. There are quite a few tracks here where Blue is bringing back that fabled third verse, and sometimes even the fourth verse. So Blue and Exile aren't just giving a lot on this record, they're asking a lot too, because this is a lot of material. But miraculously, the songs on Miles aren't really all that hard to appreciate. Somehow this album has managed the laser-focused conceptuality of Below the Heavens, but reaching a few layers deeper, while also pulling off the pillowy, textured, jazz-laced ecstasy of Give Me My Flowers, but uh, again, like a, a, a bit uh, elevated in terms of quality and detail. So yes, the sound of this record for Blue and Exile, it is familiar. This is familiar territory, but simultaneously, the both of them sound wise beyond their years at this point. Blue seems to have so much more personal experience to pull from in his bars as he dives into fatherhood, spirituality, America, hip hop, jazz. You could make a whole EP of the songs on this album where he's just going at the blue angle on this record. Blue as I can be, all the blues, you ain't never blue, just to name a couple. And it's interesting that blue can approach a topic on a song and then return to it later on the album with a different reference point or a different angle and still have it sound refreshing. Whether it be the song Miles Davis, where blue is going on about mastering his artistic craft or retelling the personal story and history of Miles Davis on the song All the Blues. And then with Spread Sunshine with the constant mention of traveling miles and miles to this place and that place and this place. It's a really cool characteristic to the album that makes the entire hour and a half of it feel really cohesive. Since most of the tracks seem to be narratively linked together like a labyrinth of secret caves. Now, before I get into the specifics of some of the tracks here, keep in mind the vast majority of the large amount of material on this record is impeccable. I didn't really get the sense that any of what I heard here was throwaway or filler just to kill time. And the magic behind these songs is pretty simple. Beats and rhymes. Good beats and rhymes. Some of the best beats and rhymes Blue and Exile have been responsible for. The production highlights on this thing are many, really too many to name, but I do love the dramatic and unlikely groove and surreal vocal samples and angelic strings on the opener. Blue! Then we get the booming kicks and what sounds like ba bum ba barbershop style vocal harmonies on When the Gods Meet. I'm very unsure about the origin of this vocal sample or really the style that it's supposed to be embodying, but I do love what it's doing for the track aesthetically and I think Exile chops it up beautifully. The thick rush of keys that hit the high contrast chorus on the song are absolutely perfect too. <sighs> 
There's also some rich pianos, a gently funky beat, warm bass on the song The Feeling. The whole thing sounds like a deep orangey sunrise hitting some city streets in the early AM. The whole vibe of the instrumental is cinematic, it's gorgeous, it's moving. I get a similar vibe from the beat on The American Dream, but a bit peppier. Troubled Water, the way the tragic vocal harmonies hit against the very heavy, classic boom bap groove on this track, it sounds like a Kanye throwback. The production on Roots of Blue takes an oddly primal turn with what sounds like some hand percussion with a wooden timbre, a dark bluesy acoustic guitar lick, hefty hip hop drums, some indigenous vocal samples. It is such a fantastically hypnotic loop and vibe that again goes for nine minutes. This is the longest track on the entire LP, and yet over the course of this song, it never really gets stale. With Dear Lord, the vintage and anthemic horns, along with the gospel style vocal harmonies, with the Gemetta Rose hook is enough to bring tears to my eyes. This track instrumentally and lyrically too is like a flawless beam of hope and aspiration and positivity that is just so desperately lacking in everything right now. Beyond that, there are the many, many, and I mean many songs that function off of really colorful, beautiful and fantastic jazz samples, which would add five or ten more minutes onto the review to go over every single one. But there is a lot of high quality production on this record, and Blue does some great things with it. Whether it be the color-based wordplay on the intro to the record, which I think is really smart, thoughtful, and inspiring, or the song The Feeling, where Blue goes over essentially how the music industry kind of chewed him up and spit him out, but for him, of course, to live to see another day, tell the tale, and creatively come out ahead. Music Is My Everything sees Blue rapping about his earliest introductions to pop music, and the way his life intersected with it beyond that, including his mom marrying a preacher who said that secular music was off limits, essentially. These are just a few of many tales of personal progression on this album, including Brightest Stars, which not only has a great guest feature from Freestyle Fellowship's AC Alone, but if you listen close here, you'll also hear Blue rapping about uh, starting out rapping and wanting to uh, essentially hit listeners with really materialistic and uh, conceited bars, but then growing beyond that because he felt like he wasn't being true to himself. Blue As I Can Be then stands out for its relentless flows and super intricate rhyme patterns. Blue's performance here is just incredible. Troubled Water as well scratches a similarly flashy itch. Then with Miles Away, we see Blue getting nostalgic, sentimental, rapping about being away, traveling, others being away, talking about people he knows caught up in the prison system or his cousins being drafted. But then simultaneously, the song is also about traveling Miles Miles, moving forward, progressing, changing. Just one more super thoughtful moment on the record, essentially. Then, to go back to the track Roots of Blue, I am consistently blown away at just how all-encompassing this song is. With Blue rapping about the early civilizations, African tribes, Abrahamic religions, American slavery, the roots of various American music genres, for verse after verse after verse, Blue is just on another level of conceptuality when it comes to hip-hop right now. You could say a lot of these themes get extended into the song African Dream, but with more of an Afrocentric angle. Then Blue showcases more entrepreneurial aspirations on the song The American Dream, which is not just a series of bars about his own personal hopes and dreams, but it's simultaneously a commentary on the almighty dollar being America's religion, essentially. Lyrically, Dear Lord is such a powerful message of unity and peace and empathy and caring, just really destroying and breaking down everything that separates mankind from this possibility, be it borders or war, violence, bigotry, hatred, organized religion. We then get hit with one of the weirder tracks in the track list, in my opinion, To the Fall But Not Forgotten. There are some cultural figures that he name drops that, you know, m might not be the best. I mean, uh, like Fidel Castro or Dr. Sebi, whose scientific methods weren't exactly like, you know, proven. So, truth be told, there are some questionable bars on this record here and there, but the lowest points on the album I found to be just underwhelming, whether that be on the kind of bland True and Livin', whose verses I found to be uh, kind of feel good but somewhat vague in their intentions. Then the song You Ain't Never Blue features some rapping from Exile, who, yes, also does rap, although he's not known to do it particularly well, and that is very much apparent in this 
this track here where he is lyrically going up against blue. The color, the sky, water in my eyes line is kind of strange. That other flubbed bar where he says, put the sorrows in the verse, and then it's like, like there's, there's something that feels lost in translation at this point, and then the, the get dap part of the line. If you listen to it, you'll know what I'm saying. There's definitely something like missing from this part, or there was a stumble, or uh, whatever. Big blue soul, you ain't even have a little. Put your hand out, I'll give you my favorite color of Skittle. <laughs> Why? Why? Outside of those moments, though, this record is great. I love this record. I think it's a fantastic record. One of the best hip-hop projects in either artist's discography, potentially the best hip-hop project of this year, and I think it's going to be a while before we hear a jazz rap album that steps to this one in terms of just how massive, creative, and well-crafted it is. Feeling a light nine on this one? Tran? Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, music forever.